Now to deal with one of the questions I get asked the most out of any, which is about how to treat a stereo track from a camera, from a feed, from a tape, or whatever's come in, as two mono independent channels, or stereo to dual mono. Now, the annoying thing is that quite often people have got a camera, and they've got the two channels, and they've recorded, say, an ambient track with the microphone on the camera, and on the second channel they've recorded somebody's microphone. And yet when they bring it into Premiere Pro, it, it treats it as a stereo pair and you can't separate them. And this is particularly hard to do, note, on the timeline. If you want to do this, you really need to deal with it when you import the actual footage or before you use it in a sequence. Once the footage is used in a sequence, for various very good reasons, Premiere says you've put it in a sequence, clearly you don't want to change it now. So it's actually much harder to make channels independent. There are some things you can do, which I'll show you in a minute or two. But certainly the best way of dealing with this is as you bring in the audio. Now, if you know you're going to be bringing in an awful lot of audio, which has got a stereo output, which you want to treat as dual mono, do it through your preferences. We can do it in the project panel, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But if you know that you're going to bring in an awful lot, and you want to treat it as you bring it in, so that it comes in as dual mono, go to your preferences. So it's Edit Preferences on a PC, Premiere Pro Preferences on a Mac, go down to the Audio section. And when you get down to the Audio section, it is this one here that says Default Audio Tracks. And it says at the moment, Use File. In other words, as it comes in, assume that's what it's supposed to be. But if you want to change it, particularly here you've got Stereo Media, it says Use File. If you drop it down to Mono, when it comes in, e each track will be an independent mono track. You can do the same with 5.1. You can split them all up into independent mono tracks. So if you know that you're going to be bringing in a lot of stereo and you want the tracks to be treated as dual mono, or again 5.1 media and you want each track to be a mono channel that you can work with independently, then change them here in your default settings. But what if you haven't done that and you want to do it after the event? I'm going to click OK. You can do this on multiple tracks, or you can do them on individual tracks. I'm just going to show an individual track. Obviously, to do multiple tracks, you would just select a range by holding the Shift key to select a range of footage, whatever you wanted. Just show you on one track. So choose this one here, right-click on the track, and go up to the Modify option here, and then go to Audio Channels. And when you get to Audio Channels, at the moment this is saying Custom. Quite often it says Use File but we want to just take that to mono. And as soon as you take it to mono, you see the changes down here. It now says channel format mono. Left is going to audio 1, channel 1. Right, audio 2, channel 1. So if audio 1 and audio 2 down here are standard tracks, they'll look like stereo tracks in your mixer, but they will actually be mono. So let me now take this file, click OK. Are you sure it says here any changes made to the number of clips or the style of those clips will not be reflected in existing timelines. Okay, This is important. If you've already used the clip, basically you've got a problem. If you already use the clip on the hope that you can separate out audio later on, it's not going to work in quite the way you think. So be careful. It says, do you want to continue? I do want to continue because I'm going to be doing it in a new sequence. Take that track and drop it down to the new sequence icon, new items icon. And as soon as it's dropped in, you'll see that Audio 1 and Audio 2, they are standard tracks, but clearly they are now mono tracks. They're exactly the same because this had to be a stereo feed from a single microphone. But if I now go up to my audio mixer, notice when it plays through that they look like stereo pairs, even though they are actually mono. This is just the way a standard track plays back. And if I wanted these to look like mono tracks, I would have need to have changed these to mono tracks and not had them as standard tracks at that time. Okay, so that's how you can change it before you've used it. You can either import them all by changing your preferences so all the tracks are treated as mono, or you can change them in the project panel, any item you like, change it from stereo to mono. So if I want to take that back to stereo, by the way, I can right click on it, go modify, audio channels, and take it from mono or I can even say use file which happens to be stereo and you can now see it's right and left audio one right and left channel it's now stereo okay 
and it's again same warning it won't affect ones that are previously used okay and if I now pull that in it's the same item precisely whereas previously it spit them out now it's a stereo pair okay so that's how you can do it how do you deal with it or what can be done if it's already in the timeline there's not a lot you can do unless you're prepared to go out to something like Adobe Audition but there is one thing you can do if particularly you've done audio on one channel and ambience on the other and you want to get rid of the ambience you can right click on the track right click on the audio and go up to this one that says audio channels and when you get to audio channels you can actually turn off a track so say I had my microphone feed on the left channel and the ambience on the right and I want to get rid of the ambience because it's annoying me and causing me problems I can drop this down and take it to none and when I click OK you'll see down here in the timeline I'm just going to expand this to show you a little bit that it's showing me that it is not taking any notice of the second channel it's only taking notice of the right channel so I'll only be able to hear the one track so although that doesn't solve the problem of splitting two microphones out what it does allow you to do is turn off one track if you've got a problem now in the next tutorial I'm just going to briefly go into Adobe Audition and show you how you can deal with it after the event it's still not perfect if you've got this problem the best thing to do is to deal with it right at the front and make sure that when you bring it in it's solved but as I say, in the next tutorial, I'll briefly pop into Adobe Audition and show you a couple of options that you can play with there.